Today I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to set up the delegated approver in Salesforce. Uh, a lot of people do this incorrectly, unfortunately. It's a two-step process that you really want to make sure you get both steps. Most people just do the first step. So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. Here's the scenario. Jane is the manager of the customer success team and she's going to be going on vacation and she'll be gone for about a week. So she also gets a lot of approval requests for opportunities, contracts, miscellaneous things that she has to sign off on in Salesforce. Well, what are we going to do? She is going to take a vacation. She's going to be out. So are we just going to let those approvals linger? No. We want to make sure that they uh, get approved by somebody. Somebody gets their eyes on them and gets a chance to approve them. So Cody is Jane's top account manager and the person who's going to be covering for Jane while she's out. So how can we make sure that Cody is getting those approval requests and is able to then approve them or reject them uh, in real time? That's what we're going to do today is we're going to use the delegated approver function within Salesforce. So this feature is um, on each user record. It's called delegated approver. The delegated approver is the alternative approver or the alternate approver. And if the field is populated, the delegated approver field is populated, the delegated approver receives the same approval request as the user or as the original recipient. So delegated approvers can also reassign approvals, I'm sorry, cannot reassign approvals, but they can approve or reject them. So it's important to remember that they can always approve or reject, but they cannot reassign. So how do we do this in Salesforce? How do we uh, make this happen? Well, the first thing that you want to do is you want to actually identify who your delegated approver is going to be. And then you want to make sure that the delegated approver is set up to receive the notification emails uh, from Salesforce so that they can respond in real time. So let's take a look at that real quick. So in this case, what does Jane have to do? She has to go into settings uh, from the menu there then go over to her approver settings on the far left under my personal information and then she wants to enter in the name of the delegated approver in this case it's going to be Cody, Cody DeBear. Um, once she does that she will save the change and that will now mark Cody as her delegated approver. So now anything that comes in for Jane to approve will also be sent to Cody as a delegated approver. So what does so this is where most people stop. They they do this and they're they're set up. Cody's gonna get the notification or Cody is set has the permission to now approve. Most people stop here. There's another step that people often miss uh, don't execute on, and that is uh, something that the delegated approver needs to do. So in this case now Cody is supposed to take an action as well. Cody needs to do the same thing. He needs to go into settings. He needs to go over to the left panel, approval settings. But instead of adding a delegated approver to that field, he needs to determine or tell the system what level of email does he want to receive. So you can see at the top there, he's got the option for uh, delegated approver or approver. He's also got the option for just delegated approver or just approver or none. And it's always best to choose approver or delegated approver so that you get all the emails in this case. So Cody's going to set this to if I am an approver or delegated approver and then he's going to save that option. So now he's going to be getting those emails for certain. So that's really all there is to it. It is a two-step process. It is the the person who is assigning the delegated approver as well as the person who will be who will be listed as the delegated approver. Make sure that both of those people make those changes to Salesforce so that they do get those things, uh, notifications in a timely fashion. And of course, when you get back from vacation, you want to clean up and make sure you remove that delegated approver from your uh, settings if you don't want them to receive those emails anymore. All right, that's all. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And uh, if you have any uh, questions about other features of Salesforce, uh, let me know and we'll make a quick video. Thank you.